Hi, my name is Bridget Hins, and I'm the Curatorial Assistant for Special Exhibitions and Publications in the Division of Modern and Contemporary Art here at the Harvard Art Museums. I want to start by saying that the Harvard Art Museums acknowledge that Harvard University is situated on the traditional and ancestral territory of the Massachusetts people, and we strive to honor this relationship. Today, I'm excited to look closely with you at some of artist Ruth Azawa's works on paper from her years as a student at Black Mountain College. This video is meant to serve as an introduction to Azawa's early works and explore how she profoundly understood the lessons of her teacher, Yosef Albers, but also made work that was decidedly her own. I, perhaps like some of you, was familiar with the wire sculptures that dominated Azawa's practice for much of her life, but knew little about the artist's biography or her other works. And here we see some of those three-dimensional biomorphic looped wire sculptures that she is best known for, featured on the recent Forever stamps that were released by the United States Postal Service um, in August of this year. I bought quite uh, a few copies for myself. I was first introduced to Azawa's works on paper when I was serving as the curatorial assistant for the 2019 exhibition, The Bauhaus in Harvard, here at the Harvard Art Museums. Three of her 13 works from our Bush Reisinger Museum collection were featured in the exhibition, and here we see one of those works installed in the show. I'll come back to this work later. I won't have a chance to look at all 13 of the works in the collection in this video, so if you are interested in seeing the others, I would encourage you to check out our website, harvardartmuseums.org, and check them out. Additionally, uh, stay tuned for the forthcoming publication, Object Lessons, The Bauhaus in Harvard, which features a wonderful essay by the scholar Jordan Trawler on Azawa's works on paper. Azawa was born in 1926 in Norwalk, California to Japanese immigrant farmers. She spent her youth helping out on the farm and attending school. And in the upper left-hand corner here, we see a sketch that Azawa did from memory of her childhood home. Not long after the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, Azawa's father was arrested, separated from his family, and sent to an internment camp in New Mexico. A few months later, later, Azawa, her mother, and siblings were interned at the Santa Anita Racetrack in California before being again forcefully moved to another internment camp in Arkansas. And in the bottom right-hand corner here, we see a photo of Azawa at that uh, internment camp in Arkansas. Azawa was able to complete her high school classes and graduated in 1943. She got a scholarship to attend Milwaukee State Teachers College. She completed her coursework there but was unable to finish her degree as she was not able to find placement for her student teaching requirement due to lingering anti-Japanese sentiment after the war. At the urging of her close friend, Elaine Schmidt, Azawa enrolled in Black Mountain College for the 1946 summer session. During the summer session, Azawa took two classes, design and color, with former Bauhaus master Josef Albers. Albers and his wife and fellow artist and teacher, Ani Albers, had moved to North Carolina in 1933 to teach at the newly founded Progressive Liberal Arts College shortly after the Bauhaus in Germany had closed its doors due to rising pressure from the Nazi party. While at the Bauhaus, Albers had taught the Vor course or the preliminary course, which all students were required to take upon starting their studies. As the leader of the preliminary course, Albers had developed a systematic curriculum of simple assignments inspired by both economy of form and means, meaning using simple forms and using materials that you had around. And here we see two examples of work made by Bauhaus students in Albers' in Albers's preliminary course. 
Elvers continued to develop and adapt this teaching method while at Black Mountain College, but it is important to note that while he employed similar exercises to those that he had developed at the Bauhaus, the structure of classes at Black Mountain College were very different. Students took the same classes over and over again. They didn't level up. Uh, advanced students were in the same classes as, the, as beginners and you work through the same or similar problems over and over again. So Azawa arrives at Black Mountain College in the summer of 1946 and she takes those two classes with Albers. And here we actually see a photo of Albers teaching at Black Mountain College. This is Albers here. And in the background, you can see Azawa seated here. Um, and on the floor here, we actually see a work that we have in our collection here at the Bush Rising Room Museum, uh, which is on the right hand side of the screen here. It's a Azawa's meander drawing. Uh, and I want to thank Jordan Trawler for pointing this out in a symposium paper that she gave. Azawa ended up staying at Black Mountain College for three years. Uh, while this was not unheard of, it was fairly rare. Uh, most students stayed for shorter periods of time as Black Mountain College was not a degree granting institution like we think of many liberal arts colleges today with this formulaized, uh, formalized curriculum. And unbeknownst to Azawa at the time, a friend and fellow student, Lorna Blaine, had helped pay for at least some of Azawa's scholarship that allowed her to stay at the school for those three years. Azawa did take classes with other teachers while at Black Mountain College, but she really connected to Albers's methods of teaching and she took an additional seven classes with him over her years there. Azawa's time at Black Mountain College profoundly shaped her personally and her art practice. And I think this is captured really nicely by this quote. My teachers at Black Mountain College were practicing artists. They taught me that there is no separation between studying, performing the daily chores of living and creating one's own work. Through them, I came to understand the total commitment required to be an artist. These ideas really stuck with Ozawa and her commitment can certainly be seen in her life after Black Mountain College uh, as she raised six children, continued her art practice, and was a community arts education activist. In 1949, Albers donated 13 of Ozawa's student works to the Bush Reisinger Museum. Uh, Albers often kept student work that he liked and that he felt best demonstrated his pedagogy. And I want to start by looking at this work here by Azawa. Um, it is untitled. Uh, Azawa rarely titled her works, but she did work with an archivist later in life to develop a cataloging system. And that's why you see after untitled this string of letters and numbers, uh, Black Mountain College, BMC, means she made the work while she was at Black Mountain College. Here we see uh, Azawa using black and purple ink on tracing paper to create a series of small triangles linked to one another. Using the triangle pattern, Azawa creates a shifting background and foreground. The eye struggles to determine if the black is the background or the cream is the background of the work. And this figure and ground in motion is one of the techniques that Albers pushed students to work with. However, Azawa's work is not purely geometric and orderly, as we might expect from Albers or his students. Rather, it's more free form and organic in nature. And this is where we see Azawa starting to exercise her own hand, though so the work, the final work, is not any less successful. Next, let's look at this untitled work. Uh, here, Azawa took a stamp uh, and stamped a piece of newspaper to create a visual pattern of zigzags. She used a stamp from the laundry room at the school. Uh, the college struggled financially and all students were required to work to help keep the college running. 
and Azawa was assigned to the laundry room among some other places for her work study. And we see her using the materials that she would have used in her work study as part of her art practice. That's sort of a, a cheeky use of materials where she's using a double sheet stamp on a double sheet of newsprint, but this is abstracted when you know, you're not looking at a detail of the work like we are here. This use of materials really reflects Albers's emphasis on economy of means or using what you have around and Azawa really took this to heart. This work, which we saw at the beginning of the video is an exercise in both color contrast. Um, she's using contrasting blues and oranges and reds and a figure background exercise. Here, Azawa creates a collage using cutouts of colored paper. She has successfully created an illusion whereby at first glance the eye perceives removal that, you know, that it appears, it, it appears that Azawa has cut away pieces of the blue paper to reveal the orange paper underneath. But upon closer inspection, we see that in fact she has added orange shapes on top of the blue paper. And you can really see that in these two details um, here where the shape hangs off the edge of the blue paper. And here you can see a shadow where the orange shape is lifting up off the blue paper. And here these two lines intersect and you can see them on top of each other uh, here. The cascading biomorphic forms that we also see here uh, are a motif that Zawa works with uh, in several other student works and that she later realized as hanging hollow sculptures of woven wire that we saw on those U.S. postage stamps. As I mentioned before, Azawa really connected with Albers's principle of frugality. And we often see her using found objects like leaves and newspaper in her student works. And here we see an example of that. She has made a collage out of dried leaves and metal wire. And I wanna end with this piece because during these times when we may not have extra money to spend on our supplies or Perhaps the art class we signed up for was canceled. Um, I think we can look to Azawa's student works for inspiration. What can you find around your home or outside that can be used to make art uh, with fall coming to a close here in New England? I know there are plenty of leaves and dried flowers around that uh, I could go collect. Uh, so works like this really remind us that we all can have access to the materials to make art. So I encourage you to look around and see what you can find. Thank you.